All right, um, this is the practice test that you're doing for a test grade. Um, this is for the purposes of doing corrections. Um, try to get it in maybe three videos, see what happens. Uh, this one starts at number one anyway. Um, so uh, I've got cars A and B are moving in opposite directions along the straight road. They pass each other at time zero, so at this time they are at the same place. This one's going, car A is going in the positive direction and car B is going in the negative direction. It looks like they're both slowing down. Um, at their velocities, given uh, the distance between the cars at time eight. Well, if I want to know um, displacement, and I'm looking at velocity time, that's the area under this. So uh, that's going to be 48 meters, right? Just doing the area of that triangle and this is negative 48 meters. So this car, car A, was going in this direction, slowing down, going 48 meters, and this one in the negative direction. So they're 96 meters apart. Particles moving along the y-axis. The particle's position as a function of time is given by y equals some constant times t cubed, some other constant times t, plus some other constant, and there's the constants. Uh, what's the particle's acceleration? This is just a very basic calculus question. So um, if that's its position. So velocity would be 3 alpha. You know what? I'm just going to put those numbers in. I'm going to rewrite this as y equals. I'm not going to worry about the units. Um, 1t cubed minus 4t plus 3. Um, if you're wondering to yourself, why did not they just give this. Um, because uh, technically, I think this is a correct use of the word technically, you need to use, uh, you need, would need to have the correct units on these constants here um, for it to come out to be right. Even here, um, you can't just cube a time and then expect to get a position, right? So um, you have to have these constants. Why are they doing it with these things here? Because they don't want to jumble this equation up with the units in there. So they're actually trying to, I don't know if they're very successful here, but they're trying to make this a little bit less cluttered and easier to deal with. You can uh, be the judge of whether they succeeded or not, but I think it's helpful for us to understand what's going on there, like why these constants. They're not trying to confuse you with these. They're trying to clean up the equation. Um, all right, so velocity, 3t squared minus 4 acceleration, 6t, plug in the time, and there is your acceleration. I mean, that should be like a 30-second question. Um, two stones represent the figure above are thrown from the same height with the same initial speed. This one down, this one that way. So that's going to get to the ground first, right? Um, if the stones are thrown at the same time and air resistance is negligible, which one of the following is true? Two stones will reach the ground at the same time. Meh. The two stones will reach the ground at the same time with different speeds. No, nope, that's going to get to the ground first. Um, because this is like, you don't have to do the kinematics here, but this would be like uh, acceler if we're looking at um, our kinematics variables, acceleration is negative g. Uh, the delta y is whatever this height is. It's going to drop by however high they're dropped from. Those are going to be the same. But the initial velocity for this one is negative v. And the initial velocity for this one, these things are the same, uh, would be zero. It's the same as being dropped, right? Um, stone A will reach the ground first. That's true. But stone B will have a greater speed just before hitting the ground. Um, well, if you think about it in terms of energy, they both have the same kinetic energy to start. And they're both going to acquire the same uh, potential energy as they drop. So the total mechanical energy has to be conserved. So I think that means since they're getting to the ground and they'll have no more gravitational potential, they have to be going the same speed, although this one will have like this component and then a downward component. This one will have all down but more of it. So um, stone A, so they're going to have the same speed. Stone A will reach the ground first, but the two stones will have the same speed, yes. Uh, stone A will reach the ground first and will have the greater speed 
Um, so looking at D is the correct answer there. So a little bit of kinematics to figure out the which one hits the ground first, and then energy to realize that they have to have the same speed because they have the same mechanical energy here, so they will have the same when they get to the ground level. Uh, number four, cars traveling clockwise around a circular track of radius 1,440 meters. Uh, when the car is at the, norther the northernmost point on the circle, so regular north, south, east, west, uh, as shown above, it has a speed of 36 meters per second, going clockwise, so that's this way. And it's slowing down. That is not, it's, uh, so that's like it's tangential acceleration, right? So that's like looking at the speedometer. Um, now, just to move in a circle at a constant speed, you have to have a centripetal acceleration, right, of v squared over r. We could actually figure out what the magnitude of it is. Um, and then also, this is the tangential acceleration, which is slowing it down, so that's pointing in this direction. So uh, I think I'm going to need to know that stuff. The direction of the velocity of the car, well, the velocity is this way, and that's completely independent of acceleration. The accelerations are going to change that, but right now they told us that it's this way. So that is uh, due east. Um, the direction of the acceleration of the car, well, it's got these two components, so it's the direction of the acceleration is this. So that is, uh, let's see, is that due east? No, it's not due anything. Is it south of east? No. Is it south of west? Yes, it's south of west, right? South of west, third quadrant. Um, what is the magnitude of the acceleration of the car? Well, it has these two components. It has this component and then the centripetal component. The centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. So that's v squared over r, and do I have a calculator here? I do. Uh, v squared over r is 0.9, apparently, according to my calculator. Um, so that gives me uh, let's see, the two components would be tangential acceleration is 1.2 and centripetal acceleration is 0.9 and I need to figure out the magnitude, so I just need to pythagorize those. I think it's one point, isn't this a 3, 4, 5 right triangle? I think it is. I think it's just this. You can do that with your calculator if you want. Um, and moving on. Um, a car moves in a straight line along the x-axis. The velocity of the car, vx, as a function of time, is shown here. Um, OK, so this is a velocity time graph. Slope of this is acceleration. Area is um, displacement. Uh, the position of the car at time 0 is 0. The average acceleration of the car during the interval is most nearly. How do you find average acceleration? Well, that's uh, final velocity minus initial velocity over time, delta, delta v over delta t. Instead of the acceleration being the derivative of velocity, it's the actual slope of this. So um, I'm just going to draw that little secant line in here because why not? So it's the slope of this secant line, right? The line connecting the final and the initial. And that looks like rise is, just paying attention to the scaling, that's negative 4 meters per second over 10, so that's negative 0.4 meters per second squared. OK. Uh, number 8, average velocity of the car. Um, how do you find average velocity? Well, you can't average the velocities because there's infinitely many of them, but you can do 
average velocity is delta x over delta t, just like we did with this. And I think I can figure out the delta x is because this is an easy geometric type thing. So let's see if we can find that area. The area of this, that is a 5 by 3 triangle. So that's going to be uh, 7 and a half, right? 1 half base times height. Um, the this area and this area cancel each other out. They're the same positive and negative. This is 2 by 2, right? Got to pay attention to this scaling. So 2 by 2, that's negative 4 in there. And then this has an area of negative 1, right? Because that's uh, 1 by 2, and it's a triangle. So it looks like I have 2.5. 7.5 minus 4 minus 1, that's 2.5 over the time interval. So that's point two. Uh, that's a quarter, right? 2.5 divided by 10. And that is not any of the answers. What did I do? Uh, let's see, average velocity of the car. What did I do wrong? This is 3 by 5. So I'm sticking to that, right? 5 times 3 is 15, divided by 2 is 7.5. And, um, and then that is 1 by negative 2. I think I like that too. Okay and then those cancel out. Um, what the heck? Uh, and that... Huh. Well, if I had to pick an answer, I if I was actually t the exam taker, I would pick that one because it's closest to what I did. And I know that there isn't anything fundamentally wrong with what I... Oh, I see what's... There's the problem. That's not at 5. I messed up the scaling. So this is a 6 by 3. So this is 9 here. And that's going to be 9 minus 5 is 4 divided by 10 is... Okay, so it is that. So it wasn't like a massive mistake. I was kind of close with my 0.25 because um, I sort of did the right thing. I just was off a little bit with one of those areas. So I would have picked that one, and I would have picked um, right. So sorry for the, the blunder there. All right. Um, two blocks uh, rest on a table as shown above. The bottom block is pulled to the right by an applied force that is strong enough so that the two blocks do not move together, and it's going to slip. Um, okay. Um, there is friction between the blocks, but the tabletop is frictionless. When the top block leaves the bottom block, where does it land? Well, this is going to get pulled this way, and there is some friction. So friction opposes the direction of motion. So this is going to move this way, and the friction is going to be on it. Uh, hold on. That's not true. Um, the friction here, if there was zero friction, this would just stay at rest and it would then drop straight down like the tablecloth trick whoo, and then that would drop straight down but um, there is some friction so that is going to drag this along this way the friction on this block will be in this direction you could imagine if there was enough static friction then um, it would just like ride on top of this block right um, so the top block will land directly below. No, because there is friction. The top block will land to the left. No, because the force on it is that way. Um, the top block will land to the left of where it starts because of kinetic. The top block will land to the right. That's true because of static friction. No, if they're, if they're moving, if the blocks do not move together, then this one's slipping against this one. That's kinetic friction, not static friction. So correct answer would have to be E. Um, 
a sphere of mass m is dropped from the top of a building and reaches the ground before achieving terminal velocity. The force of air resistance that acts on the sphere is given by this. That's a classic model where k is a positive constant. Uh, what happens to the magnitude of the sphere's velocity and acceleration and to the distance it falls during each second as the sphere approaches the ground? So um, just to remind you what will happen with the velocity or the speed that will approach terminal velocity. What will happen with the acceleration? The acceleration will start at uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. This is the magnitude of it and then it'll decay down to zero because this is approaching a constant speed. And um, let's see if we can do it from there. So the magnitude of the velocity is going to decrease, right? Ah, sorry. The magnitude of the velocity is going to increase toward this. I was thinking of the slope of this. So the magnitude continues to increase. the magnitude of the acceleration decreases. Now with the ones that we can cross out, we can cross out the whole thing. And then the distance that it falls each second, is that going to increase or decrease? Well, the velocity is um, reaching its terminal velocity. And although, like, it kind of effectively sort of kind of gets there, it reaches the ground before achieving terminal velocity. Okay, so it is still accelerating, although by smaller and smaller amounts. So the distance that it falls each second is increasing, although it is doing that uh, by smaller and smaller gains because of this approaching terminal velocity. Um, so that would be uh, answer choice B. And I'll leave this video there for, uh, for it to be continued.